I don't think I ever wanted to acknowledge that it was really heart disease. I knew I had congestive heart failure. If I walked from York Avenue to First Avenue, I was really in trouble. My daughter lives in Brooklyn and she lives in a townhouse. I couldn't go up the steps, so my grandson had to come down to see me. She developed now aortic stenosis, which is narrowing of one of the heart valves, one of the three critical heart valves, which is calcified and narrowed. Left alone, the valve only gets worse and ultimately leads to the demise of patients. By the time patients like Carolyn develop symptoms with a valve that's as tight as hers was, patients rarely live beyond a year or two unless they, they receive appropriate therapy. I did not know that maybe I was six months to a year of dropping dead on the street because my aortic valve was so tight. Since she's had two prior heart operations, a conventional operation where we replace the aortic valve would have been high risk. Aortic stenosis is definitely an affliction for patients in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, and an open heart surgery is invasive, both anatomically with an incision on the chest, but also physiologically with the heart-lung machine. In that age group, we certainly see a fair number of patients who aren't operative candidates or who are extremely high risk for surgery. So here's a group of high risk patients that were not really being, you know, we've been told to sit in the chair and wait until they die, that we now have new technology. TAV or, or TAVI refers to a minimally invasive or less invasive placement of an aortic valve into patients who have severe symptomatic aortic valve stenosis. It involves replacing this particular valve, the aortic valve, either through a catheter-based approach through the femoral artery in the leg or through a small incision on the left side of the chest where we go through the apex of the left ventricle. The device is a long catheter with a balloon and on that a stented valve is placed and crimped onto the balloon. And if you think of a door and a doorway with door frame, it's placing a new door and door frame inside the old one and pushing the old one out of the way. And so we actually place over a balloon a stented valve in the place of the patient's prior valve and push the old one out of the way and now a new stented valve sits in its place and does the work for the heart. The patients who were turned down before now can have this exceedingly minimally invasive approach and it works very well. It, they get basically immediate relief of their aortic stenosis. She was one of the first patients that we brought in for this percutaneous valve therapy. I was not scared. She went in with a great attitude. On the morning of her operation, the OR called me and said, your patient's here on the OR table, but she refuses to go under anesthesia. I said, why? They said, because she wants to sing you a song. <laughs> so I said, I'll be right there. You fixed me once, you fixed me twice, you'll fix me once again, Salemi, so Krieger, and Wong. So get it done, replace my valve, and please don't take too long. So let me creak her and walk. And she sang this great song for us, and then she allowed us to put her to sleep for the procedure. Okay, we're going to deploy everybody. Looks good. Yeah. Inflating. Inflating. The surgical procedure fortunately went very well. Stuck in that new wonderful valve, opened it up. And within about three days, she was up out of bed walking around and, and able to go home. Here I am. I have more energy now than I have had in years. While Cornell was one of the first centers in the United States to offer this technology, it really addresses a patient population we haven't been able to take care of before. I mean, I think a lot of these patients were desperately ill, and it is quite amazing, the turnaround. I mean, you take a valve that's as big as an eraser on top of a pencil, and you make it as big as a quarter or silver dollar in about 10 minutes. That's a dramatic change for their hearts. It is a once in a generation technology. This is a leap forward. The team that we put together to work on percutaneous valve technology here at Wild Cornell was one of the finest in the country. With this option available, we can now provide hope and a treatment for patients for whom previously there were none. When I was in ICU, um, my daughter came in to see me and the first thing she said to me, was now your grandson will get to know you.